This is Raymond Solder with a morning update on Ukraine for Saturday, March 12th, 2022. This is the time when a news reporter's job is at its very hardest. There's no way to sugarcoat what's happening in Kyiv at this very minute. Russian troops are definitely advancing on this city, the capital city where Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky is, in Putin's mind, the grand prize. Never mind that it has taken the destruction of an entire nation to get to this result. Putin wants his prize like a little child wants candy. Nearly anyone who is sitting where he still sits in his office inside the Ukraine capital would be fleeing now, but not Zelensky. I've never seen any man with firmer resolve. As I tell the world, his chances are next to nothing. He already knows it. To face death seemingly without fear is rare in any human. Win or lose this war, Zelensky will always be a winner. What Zelensky has done and is still doing has given his same heart to his people. They want to be as brave as he is. They're proud Ukrainians who are willing to fight to the death for their freedom. Many of them have seen friends and family members die, and still they hold their weapons without flinching against Putin's puppet military, no matter what the odds. On Tuesday, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett phoned Zelensky and urged him to surrender to Russia. Bennett told him, if I were you, I would think about the lives of my people, and I'd take Russia's offer to surrender. Zelensky's response was a polite, I hear you. Zelensky's administration believes Bennett's desire is to be involved in diplomatic efforts between Ukraine and Russia with an attitude that comes more from not wanting to take a public stance against Russia than any desire to end the conflict fairly. Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg, a regular contributor to Fox News, said this on Fox and Friends yesterday morning. Kiev is a 2,000-year-old city with a population of 1.5 million people that used to be 3 million people. That's because 2 million people have fled from there. Because the artillery Russia is going to have to bring to bear will be massive and you're going to see a lot of civilians dying. Putin is now reaching a point of truly being a war criminal. These are things we don't tolerate in society and we shouldn't. You're going to see it on television. It's going to be very clear. This is the fight, the culminating fight. I think this coming week is critical for the survival of Ukraine if Zelensky can hold on and break the back of Putin. Otherwise, you'll see the break between instead of the East and West Germany maybe in East Ukraine and West Ukraine.
with unconventional warfare forces the rest of Putin's life. They are not going to quit. From Newsmax, in Moscow's latest move to restrict access to foreign social media platforms, communications and Russian media regulator Roskomnadzor said in a statement that is restricting national access to Instagram. It said the platform is spreading calls to commit violent acts against Russian citizens, including military personnel. Roskam Nadzor cited a Thursday tweet by Meta spokesman Andy Stone conveying a company statement saying it had, quote, made allowances for forms of political expression that would normally violate our rules on violent speech, such as death to the Russian invaders. Stone's statement followed a Reuters report that Meta was making a temporary change to its hate speech policy to allow Facebook and Instagram users in some countries to call for violence against Russians and Russian soldiers in the context of the Ukraine invasion. The statement stressed, however, that the company still won't allow credible calls for violence against Russian civilians. Facebook parent meta platforms, which also owns Instagram, on Friday defended what it described as a temporary decision taken in extraordinary and unprecedented circumstances. In a statement Friday from Meta's Nick Clegg, Meta's president of global affairs, he said, I want to be crystal clear. Our policies are focused on protecting people's rights to speech as an expression of self-defense. And in reaction to a military invasion of their country. Fact is, if we applied our standard content policies without any adjustments, we would now be removing content from ordinary Ukrainians expressing their resistance and fury at the invading military forces, which would be rightly be viewed as unacceptable. He noted that the policy only applies in Ukraine, and the company hasn't changed its policies against hate speech targeting Russian military. Russia has already blocked access to Facebook, limited access to Twitter, and criminalized the intentional spreading of what Moscow deems to be fake reports as part of President Vladimir Putin's crackdown on social media and news outlets like the BBC. Big tech companies, meanwhile, have moved to restrict Russian state media from using their platforms to spread propaganda and misinformation. YouTube said Friday it's blocking access globally to channels associated with Russian state-funded media. It previously blocked them, specifically RT and Sputnik, across Europe. YouTube, which is owned by Google, announced the move in a Twitter post, saying that while the change is effective immediately, it would take time for systems to ramp up.
It said it's also removing content about Russia's invasion of Ukraine that, quote, minimizes or trivializes well-documented violent events. The Kremlin refers to the invasion as a special military operation and not a war. YouTube previously paused YouTube ads in Russia. Now it's extending that to all the ways it makes money on the platform in Russia. Meta has also barred Russian state media from Instagram and Facebook. This is Ray. It's an extreme privilege to be working with both YouTube and Google. Our newscasts are still being heard in both Ukraine and Russia. Civilian Ukrainian hackers are conducting a form of counter-espionage by locating and identifying people that are assisting Russian forces with intelligence from inside the country. The hackers have uncovered correspondence between pro-Russian activists in the recently captured southern city of Kherson. The hackers were able to penetrate a Ukrainian separatist community in the social network called V Contacti, the biggest in Russia with more than 500 million accounts, which was banned in Ukraine in 2017. Goncharenko's post included numerous screenshots of the correspondence between the pro-Russian separatists. One of those identified in the post has been ordered to gather intelligence on pro-Ukrainian activity activists. Let me read that again. One of those identified in the post, quote, has been ordered to gather intelligence on pro-Ukrainian activists. Other operations included the photographing and videotaping of Ukrainian military equipment, the number of soldiers, their movements, and exact geolocations. One screenshot showed a series of messages that were exchanged between the pro-Russian activists right before the capture of Kherson. We will be in Kherson tomorrow, it reads. We need information on the Nazis that are active in the city. We have to capture the people that spread information and the ones that agitate people to protest. We'll capture the rest later. Now the screenshot identified the exact locations of Ukrainian armed forces positions. Another post showed a map of Ukraine designating territories captured by Russia. The map appeared to conflict with information generally reported by news outlets. Other cyber groups also have launched asymmetrical attacks. The hacking collective Anonymous today hacked into the Russian streaming services Wink and Ivy, which is like Netflix, and live TV channels Russian 24, Channel 1, Moscow 24, to broadcast war footage from Ukraine. The hospital that I mentioned this afternoon that Russian troops shelled was a cancer hospital in the southern city of Mykolaiv with hundreds of patients inside. Mykolaiv is just under 300 miles south of Kiev and is on the Black Sea coast 
and close to the city of Odessa. Peace talks haven't been worth their time, though Ukraine has had them at least three times now with hostile Russian negotiators. President Biden tweeted tonight, I want to be clear. We will defend every inch of NATO territory with the full might of a united and galvanized NATO, but we will not fight a war against Russia in Ukraine. A direct confrontation between NATO and Russia is World War III and something we must strive to prevent. This is Ray. I'll be back to bring you more later today.